Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Sid Meier's Gettysburg Part 6 of our look at the 1997 Wargaming Classic. Thus far, we have struggled mightily, we're playing as the Confederacy in this series, and we've lost every single battle except the last one. The last battle prevented the Union from being able to destroy our army in this battle, and resulted in a marginal victory for the Confederacy, which is opening up back historical options, perhaps, or at least something not quite so unhistorical as the Confederate army being destroyed on the field of Gettysburg. I'm not quite sure what to expect in the next battle, but this was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, so what I'm actually going to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and jump back into the battle without further ado and see where we're at. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. This is the final episode in this series, in this battle, and uh, I'll catch you guys at the end. General Longstreet, we have attacked the enemy at every point but one. What are you smoking, <laughs> General Lee? In the morning with Pickett's division and elements of Hill's Corps. My men are ready, sir. We will take that hill for Virginia. But General... The enemy is firmly entrenched there and backed by artillery. It'd be suicide. General Lee, sir, let me take a large force and march around their left flank and attack them there. But my scouts tell me they have weakened the center to protect their flank from our attacks these last two days. You're on crack. He is there in the morning. He must be attacked. Sir, shall I direct Pickett to attack their center? Oh my god. General Lee, if you order an attack on the center, you are on crack. Like seriously, you, you, we were a marginal victory, way the hell over here, away from a decisive Confederate defeat and the destruction of the entire Confederate army. And now Robert E. Lee's like, well, we've attacked them on both flanks. We should really hit them in the center across a mile of open ground. Um, no, this sounds like a recipe for disaster. Do we do the iconic Pickett's Charge? Do we swing around to the right? The one thing I really like about this game is this isn't the only time you get it. You get it at the evening of the 1st of July as well. There are a couple, and they're always from the Confederate side. There's a couple key what-if moments where, you know, all the sort of armchair historians say, well, if only Lee had done this. If only Ewell had listened to Lee's instructions. If only Jackson was there. There's a few of those sort of key pivotal moments in the battle that historians debate uh, fiercely, and the game gives you a choice of which you want to do, and it portrays it just in the way that the historians kind of talk about as well. Uh, you know, Ultimate General kind of gives you this impersonal way of clicking between two potential variants, so you have that same capability, but it lacks the ambiance, it lacks the discussion, it lacks the historical context. It assumes knowledge in a way that Ultimate General uh, just kind of leaves you feeling like this is a really good game, but there are some areas that it could do a little bit better. I know this is like a corny old 90s game, you know, the era of full motion video, and it's got that too. But these map moments, these, in my opinion, are some of the pieces that make this game shine uh, beyond anything else that's out there. And again, maybe it's me just being corny or whatever, but it's also this this sort of uh, this setting, this care and love and attention to detail and the way that they try and make you feel like you're at the table where the discussions are occurring between the officers, the way they almost make this scene seem like a uh, a documentary that might have been on the History Channel in the 90s, it's what sets this kind of a game made by a large developer apart from anything else that's out there because other games don't have that. They don't make you feel the same way that, that this can. And this is where cutscene type things are done tremendously right. Um, with that being said, my only hesitancy is if I tack on the left, I'm going to be going against Sedgwick's core, which is the strongest and largest core in the army. If I attack in the center, I'll at least be going against Hancock, who had deployed forces in uh, some of the July 2nd battles. I think actually we just fought Hancock, so we may have bloodied him down. Of course, the problem is if we swing around to the right with Longstreet, I think we use Longstreet's cores as well. So, uh, uh, what's the chat say? No, General, you are correct. We will swing around by our right and attempt to roll up his flank. If we can get Pickett's division to stride the Tawny Town Road, we may well force them to fall back on Baltimore, leaving the road open to Washington. You must hold this position at the end of the battle. This is your best brigade. More infantry and artillery are coming up. All right, so we're attacking 
The Round Tops. Tawny Town Road. Big Round Top. The Little Round Top. So Law's gonna have the least desirable position. Backing across the open. Actually, let's not do that. <laughs> let's, let's not do that with you. Let's put you over here. We're going to send you in on a double line. Well, oh no, you've only got four regiments. You're going in on... I'm just gonna stack up and try and go up the center, not the up the center, but up up the shaded ground here. I have no desire to launch an attack across open ground south of the round tops. We'll have Robertson cover Law's flank. Law's gonna swing up over here. Benning's also gonna move in over there. We'll stack up and send all our force across this slow rise into the round top. We'll have Kemper hit him in the center as sort of a pinning them in place. And then if we can take big round top, then from that point we can swing right and pin these troops in the open. And then we can sw uh, push straight on through to little round top. Or at least that's my hope. Uh, I've got to wait, I think, to launch this offensive till some of my other troops are in place. So we're going to wait for Armistead to come up. I think we'll also have our artillery over here. I don't think they're going to do much good uh, in the attack on the round tops because of the terrain, but I'm actually thinking they may be useful in defending against any federal flanking maneuver against our troops guarding the flank of the attacker, Robinson. I'll hit him there. Anderson's in position. Benning is still getting there. Armistead's still coming up. And we're about ready to get going. So our artillery is pounding these infantrymen. The Tawny Town's the real prize. Round tops are important, which can cause them to vacate their position, but theoretically, at least from a strategic perspective, the Tawny Town is what actually cuts the avenue for the treat. The other thing is this artillery, theoretically, looks like they're mostly constant. Uh, they all concentrated on the same unit. That's the other thing. It'd be nice if you could manually say who you want to target. Because if you can manually target, you could, you know, gang up on individual regiments. And artillery can drive individual regiments all back. All right, so we are almost into position. I don't know if we'll have enough time to execute my intended attack. But uh, I don't want to go off half-cocked, so we'll go ahead and... Kemper's already moving, so we'll let Anderson and Benning. Also advance Law. Armistead will be the reserve. He's just getting into position. Robertson's gonna... Brigade to support the extension of the line. 
Armistead looks good, so he's going to go. So we've got this whole force advancing now. We're going to oblique Kemper, I think. This will allow them to shift without exposing their flank, but I'm not really sure how that works in this game anyway. Now, this is not a very efficient advance in the sense that we've got a lot of troops overlapping e each other. But if I do d elect to go with the charge mentality, then it might work. Some troops are engaged. Bring the first Texas forward to support. We're going to get rid of the uh, trees so we can see the positions a little bit better. And again, you can only see based off of what your troops can actually see. Retreating already. Alright, so the federal troops that were over here are now trying to flank our main attack. So it looks like it's a good thing we put Robertson in position. He's in relatively good terrain for the defensive. But we're going to have to advance him out a little bit out of those positions to help support his own flank. Orchard. All right, extend the flank. Regiments is retreating just great. We're gonna move over here, shooting it. The rest of these guys are all shooting it. Well, the enemy's massed a massive battery over here on the right. That's actually gonna be an issue. It could theoretically enfilade our entire position. I'm just banking on the fact that they won't be able to see our position from a uh, the perspective that you know they're in really rough terrain. So maybe they won't be able to see down our line. It looks like most of them are concentrating on the first Texas, which is in this wheat field here. Morning, General. New officer spotted near Little Round Top. Sometimes all that means is, oh, hey, we see someone. Anderson's regiments here charging in on the federal troops on Big Round Top. Alright, so they've driven those men back. Good job, GT Anderson. Keep up the good work. Keep advancing down that position. The enemy does appear to be massing up against my own troops here. The good thing is I've got this battery here that's firing into their flank. Hopefully it will help. See some of their troops are being pushed back. Benning is actually going to change his front. Rather than advance, he's going to try and help hold our flank. 
A lot of troops diverted away from the offensive, though. Taking big round top. These guys are all in the open, though, so that will make them very vulnerable to artillery fire. Or that's the logic. They're kind of flanking my other flank. My strategy with Kemper means that I've got kind of an open flank in the air. The fact that I'm moving these troops slowly, however, is allowing me to get them in without too much morale damage. Retreating. Maybe it's one of my charging units? Yeah. try and overwhelm them and keep the momentum and move toward Little Round Top. The Tawny Town Road is also an important objective. The problem is it always seems like they've got more troops that we don't become aware of until it's too late. Like hidden amongst the rocks. Alright, so we drove one regiment back. We're routing a good deal of their troops or driving back some of their batteries of artillery. This close in battery of artillery here firing kind of almost into their flank is helping, I think. Charge those guns. That battery's routed. I don't know why these artillery guns are just kind of going in circles. It seems like a really weird thing for the AI to do. Reporting, General. New officer spotted near Dolly's Knob. Which I don't know where that is. Don't even see it on the uh, on the map here. Our flanks are covered. All right, that regiment's tiny as hell. Unless there's a lot more to them that we can't see. Generals, keep pushing forward ever so slowly with your men. Maybe we'll uh, have infinity time and we'll uh, we'll win the war. Just lost a unit routed. Robbins. 
So they are starting to finally overwhelm our... Why these guys can't shoot at anyone, I don't know. I think they'd have a good line of sight there. These guns are going to get routed and overwhelmed here shortly, probably. to push them but trying come on Lou break him who's retreating now infantry back here by the guns. Alright, there you go. That unit's routed. I'm assuming they've got like a brigade or something near the Tawny Town. Could be wrong. Let's shift a reg let's shift a couple of regiments that way. Officer spotted near Little Round Top. I think that's just this officer. Hold the fire, boys. Reporting, General. But you not right out there all along? Oh, so they've got a whole nother brigade coming up to Little Round Top. See, these guys are in, like, skirmish formation or something, it seems like. That's the confusing thing, is, like, I feel like the game uses skirmish formation in a way that was not real. Alright, we're approaching the Taunta Town. They must not have many troops around here. These guys must be skirmishers for sure. We've secured the Tawny Town. I don't know what we're all routing. Are these troops down here being routed? Looks like it. So a whole bunch of federal troops routed in the south. Tawny Town is ours by the skin of our teeth for the moment. skirmishers. We're going to push you back. Let's 
Skirmishers are way too goddamn robust, robust in this game. Alright, so we've got a half an hour left. We've taken the Tawny Town. We've taken the Round Top. Little Round Top is still theirs. When we've taken the Little Round Top, what I, or the Round Top, what I mean is we've taken the Big Round Top. Meanwhile, our charging brigades in here are pushing back several federal regiments. I don't know if they can hold on. Basically on top of these Yankee regiments. So I want to keep troops in and around the Tawny Town, because Lord knows if I was the Yankees, I'd be counterattacking there. These troops in the south have actually managed to do pretty substantial... Oh god, there's enemy cavalry bombs. This must be uh, Barnesworth and Custer down here. So we surrounded a bunch of Yankee infantry, and in turn they're surrounding our guns. These guys are getting hit from front and back. But hey, we've got the Tawny Town. We'll leave at least a regiment on Little Round Top or Big Round Top. These guys are going to come up to support the artillery. Hopefully the guns can hold back enemy cavalry in line formation. Didn't we be getting, like, Stuart or something as reinforcement? Can't even tell any units apart. Forty eighth Alabama. Fifty nine men. Go take little round top all by yourself. You can do it. There they go. All right. So, but we did just kind of break through over here. Why they're not charging to the troops two feet in front of them. They are. Now they are. Now we can get in behind them over here. Alright, so the artillery is getting in a fight here over here with some cavalry, but uh, the infantry for the moment taking the brunt of the infantry's attention. I don't think there's any way to rush for Little Round Top. A lot of these guys are in skirmish column. That's the frustrating thing is troops go willy-nilly from skirmish to line when it suits them. I think that's my biggest frustration with this game is it's like... Because you there's already a little bit too much micromanaging. And the fact that I've got to like keep an eye to figure out like... Should I be charging? Because that's the only way to really push back enemy skirmishers. Should I be charging or not? All right, you guys are going to come back here. Some of you guys are going to stay back here to hold little round or big round top just in the event the enemy figures out a way to deploy some substantial troops against us. Like, I think most of these guys are in line formation, but I'm not really sure. Well, I'm assuming the retreating is occurring in the south. The other thing I've noticed, which is kind of clever with this game, is that 
it seems like the volume of the retreat yell determines uh, how close they are to you. So there you go, a tactical Confederate victory. We go around the Federal flank. We, for the first time in our entire battle, we've inflicted more casualties on the Yankees than they on us. 3,048 infantry, we lost 2,800 men exactly. 82 artillery, they lost six, or we lost 64. 99 cavalry, they lost nothing. So there you go, about a 2,000 point advantage there, a tactical victory on the right flank of the army on July 3rd. From a tactical perspective, this should be a Confederate victory. We lost every battle until the last two. We narrowly avoided a, a decisive Confederate defeat. And then we won a tactical victory at the end of the day uh, in Kilpatrick Flanks, that variant of Longstreet's option of Big Round Top. Um, so let's see what happened. From a win-loss perspective, you know, we lost almost every single scenario. We won a minor and a tactical victories. We should have lost the battle, but we'll see what the game says, because in this scenario, we just knocked out the Federal Army's uh, line of retreat to Washington. So let's see what happens. There you go. We get a tactical Confederate victory at the Battle of Gettysburg. All right. Well, let's listen to the little outro. Street, I eagerly await your report from the front, sir. Have we broken the Union lines? General Lee, the men have again achieved victory. The Federals are retreating in disorder, leaving their wounded and equipment abandoned along the way. I see. Well, praise be to God who has severely struck our enemies. General Longstreet, you must look to your corps. Prepare them to march at long last on Washington. Yeah, a tactical Confederate victory, especially in the way that we just won it, would not lead to marching on Washington. That was almost like a Chancellorsville-level battle, which I know people love to portray Chancellorsville as this great Confederate victory, and it was to a certain extent, but it didn't, you know, the Confederate army was not better off relative to the Union army at the end of the fight. They won on a battlefield sense. They didn't win in any strategic sense, and uh, that was very much the battle that we just won. But hey, you know what? A victory is a victory, and I will take the victory. Uh, we lost uh, when we did our playthrough as the Union, uh, narrowly. And uh, we lost, well, not even really that narrowly, pretty pretty convincingly. And we lost uh, the Confederates decisively last night when I was half asleep and comatose trying to play this game. Today we win. Um, uh, we lost every battle that I used any kind of cheat codes in, so whatever. Uh, cheat whatever um, and we won the the two final battles uh, which were decisive enough to at least give us a battlefield edge which would have caused Meade to withdraw his forces following that battle uh, and there you go um, with that being said guys I think that's going to do it for tonight and we'll go ahead and wrap it up there so a, another completion of a series of Sid Meier's Gettysburg this time we won the battle as the Confederacy no decisive victory but at least a tactical victory uh, we will see how things play. Well, I don't know. I guess the question is whether we play it again. I may stream it again. I don't know if I'm going to chop it up and put it on YouTube again. I guess we'll see. Um, but, uh, but we'll find out. Let me know your guys' thoughts below. Let me know if this was a series you enjoyed or or what have you or whether you're kind of done with it. But um, that uh, is a topic, I think, for another time. So until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you once again, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time, I'm out.